All right. So our progress so far is that I chose a band book title. I chose The Outsiders. And it's about street gangs in the 1950s. And the only thing you had to worry about with street gangs in the 1950s were fast cars and switchblades and cigarettes and greasy hair. So it's almost nostalgia. But those are the kind of images that I piled together into my jumble. But right now, it's, it's kind of just like someone stamped a bunch of things on top of each other, right? It doesn't really have a clean, coherent message to it yet, even though it meets the, the bare requirements. So as I continue that project, the first thing I want to do is make sure I can find it and be organized about it. So I created a folder called Exercise 1. And I'm going to open up my PSD file, which I tend to mark with the green color. If you want to give your file a color, you just right click on it and choose a color. Green means that this is my working file, that this is the one I want to go to to make changes. And now I've got my layers. Now I want to clean them up. And so let's understand what we have. We have a a white background layer that's 10 inches by 10 inches. Remember, it has to be at least 8 by 10 inches. And it's at a resolution of 350 pixels per inch. That's my lab standard, but it needs to be at least 300. That's always our print standard. At least 8 by 10, at least uh, 300 pixels per inch. And then on top of that, just blank white, I then have these rasterized files. So if they came in as a smart objects because I brought them from the desktop or brought them from another folder, I had to rasterize them before I could erase from them. So you want to make sure you rasterize everything. You do that by right clicking on it and clicking on rasterize. You'll see that it will have a little box in the corner of the layer preview window if it is a smart object. And then we have different types of images, right? Some with like really kind of technical lines, some with more gestural lines, some that are thicker, some that are thinner, and they're all overlapping. So to clean it up, what I want to do is make sure they're all on multiply mode instead of normal mode, because you see normal mode will show any whites or other opaque pixels in the layer. Multiply will help them all show. Multiply will show any dark pixel and add it to whatever is on top. It's like a projector. But this allows me to start uh, cleaning up and making selective choices. So for instance, I might use my lasso tool, which is going to keep it really basic with the lasso. And I might select the space within the glasses here. So I just lasso around that. If I delete that from the glasses layer, because I want you to understand how layers work, it will remove the pixels from the glasses. But that's not what I want. So I'm going to hit Command-Z. Instead, I want to re remove it from the, the boy's head layer underneath. So I click on that layer and then delete. And if I miss something like this little corner, I can go in and get it. So I'm looking at the overlaps that are interesting and choosing what I like. Um, I don't really love this mouth that's on this layer. So I'm going to delete that. And this looks like some kind of strange thumb, but it's actually the boy's ear. So maybe I'll delete the inside of the ear. Again, thinking of some of the inspiration for this project, Arturo Herrera, like deleting identifiable facial features from the seven dwarves and then just using their line quality. If it's hard to tell where the lines are coming from, like this nostril line here, I just click on and off the eyeballs next to the layer, and that helps me see what layer it belongs to. Then I can hit delete. As you stack up more and more layers, they can get more complicated. And while you're doing that, you might also hit Command T, which is to free transform it. That's a shortcut for going to edit and then to free transform within Photoshop. Something very similar in Photo P, except in Photo P it's Control T, not Command T. 
And that's the main thing that's different. And because if you hit Command T on a Mac, that will open up a new tab. I do that all the time when I'm using Photo P. Won't in the world, but it's just little differences. It's also the difference between a PC version of Photoshop and a Mac version of Photoshop. Just Control versus Command. But otherwise, it's all the same. And I can enlarge this. I can tilt it. Now that we're really refining, I can also right click within that transform box after I hit Command T and I get a bunch of options. My favorite of which you can flip them horizontally, like flipping the negative. You can hit Command Z to undo that. My favorite is warp and we'll be using warp a lot in exercise two. But warp allows you just to, in very simple ways, bend the pixels to your will. It kind of makes a nine, a nine square grid kind of chicken wire, and then you get to pull on the wire to distort it. So I can make that knife into a nose pretty easily that way. And if I want to see the difference after I've transformed something, if I hit Command Z, I can toggle it back and forth. It was that. And then if I hit Shift Command Z, this is the new version of Photoshop, or I can go to my history, I can see the difference between the two. So Command Z will take you one step back, but if you keep hitting Command Z, it will take you multiple steps back. So Command Z will take you one step back, <laughs> usually, except that I'm using that. And then shift command Z will take you one step forward. So it's a, a nice shortcut to kind of toggle and see if what you did just did is something you like. Now that I have that knife lined up, maybe I want to erase the things behind it. So I can just, I'm not using the eraser tool because that's a little bit more specialized. We'll be getting into it. I'm just going to use the lasso and I'm just going to erase away from the boy layer where it overlaps with the knife. And then probably the nose as well. Now here's the nice thing. Once you've made a selection, like the space inside the knife blade here, then I can move that selection between layers. See how that selection is always there until I get rid of it. So it means I can erase it from the boy layer and get rid of that ear. I can also erase it from the glasses layer and get rid of those nose without having to reselect that thing each time. So selections move between layers. So you might find similar things helpful in your project. I'm going to do Command T on this knife. Let's get a nice kind of pirate X going here. Let's warp it a little. I can just broaden it out, get a more pleasing shape for my composition. Remember, even though we're using other people's pixels and we're not allowed to make our own pixels for this, we are encouraged and expected to modify pretty heavily the pixels we find. The more we modify them, the more we're transforming them into our own vision. Okay, so this I'm going to show you a specialized way of selecting. My first Photoshop teacher way back in 1992, they told me that Photoshop is all about selecting. If you can select well, you can do good things in Photoshop. And this is back with Photoshop 2, I think. So, a long time ago. So, to me, the lasso is the most direct way to select, but there are lots of other ways to section out pixels, right? So if I'm on the layer, which has this knife that I've warped, and I wanna select the blade area, instead of having to lasso within the black lines, I can select all of the pixels that are touching within the blade. So what do I mean by that? So if I use the tool underneath the lasso and hold down on it, it will open the drawer. And what I wanna use is the magic wand tool. This is kind of the next oldest tool in Photoshop for selecting. The magic wand tool has certain options that are at the top and you always wanna get used to checking your tool options. 
it has something called a tolerance and it has something called contiguous that you check. So if I have contiguous checked, it means it will select all the pixels that are similar to where I click that are touching. If I uncheck contiguous, it will match all the pixels where I click anywhere in that layer, right? So if I click here with contiguous turned off, it's going to select all the empty space that isn't filled in with black pixels, right? Because this is just a black and white image. And you'll notice that it's selecting the empty space because you also see the marching ants on the, cor on the edges of the frame. If, I'll do Command Z, if I, and Command D as a shortcut to deselect, if I do that same thing with clicking on the black, then it will select only the black pixels. And so you'll see that the, the edges aren't selected. Now, if I have contiguous checked, and I hit Command D to deselect, then I can select within a shape. And because all the pixels around it are neatly contained, we'll get into this with digital coloring, now that will be a nice sharp shape that I can cut out from other layers. So for instance, if I want the boy's hair cut out, I just hit delete with that shape. If I want this knife cut out, so on and so forth. Okay, I can hit Command D to deselect. I can turn off the eyeballs on the other layers and I can use that contiguous selection to get the other parts of the blade. I can add to a selection. Any selection you can add to and you can subtract from. To add to it, you hit Shift while you're working. It will add a little plus sign next to your selection tool, whether it's a lasso, whether it's a magic wand or something else. So I'm going to select these other parts of the blade just within the empty space. Right? And now those are selected and can be moved between layers. And so I'm going to subtract them from the boy. And I'm going to subtract them from the other blade. Maybe, maybe not. You can kind of see what that does and see if you like that. And I can try subtracting them from the glasses, but I don't think I like that. The beauty of digital is that you can undo things. You can try things out. You can make duplicates. And you get to really kind of see what something will do before you're committed to it. All right, now I can turn that blade back on. And then is there anything else? Let's clean up the, uh, the hilt here. Whoops. I was in the wrong layer. So you're going to be selecting with your selection tool within the layer that you're currently activating. So I need to activate the right layer in order to select within those pixels. And then I can delete it from another layer. And it's kind of fun. It's like really quick stenciling. I like that. I'm always squinting to see. I think I do like that. Kind of weakens this, the glasses a little bit. All right. Now I get to go to these blueprints. Now this is interesting. The blueprints are a very different line quality. So the first thing I can do is actually decide if I want to thicken those lines or, or play with them. And an easy way to do that is under image adjustments. Remember, we saw this before. If we had an image that wasn't quite black enough or whites that were kind of gray, we can really push it to be black and white pixels. So we go to image adjustments and then levels. That's always going to be our most basic adjustment. It gives us what's called a histogram. We have the, the black pixels over here, the white pixels over here, and we can limit them to basically make the whites brighter or the blacks darker. And so if I Command Z, and then uh, Shift Command Z, 
you can see if that makes any difference. And that just means that these are pretty solid black pixels.